And uh, first of all, I want to say how you're doing in general. How's your mood? How's the weather? <laughs> I, oh, the weather is amazing. Well, it's been like absolutely incredible autumn here. In uh, I'm living now, nowadays in Andalusia here in southern Spain. Oh. And we haven't received any water, any rain for months. And it's actually pretty sad because the nature is really needing it at the moment. And mm -hmm. so, hey, it's like, it's like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sun is shining, t-shirt weather is really cuckoo weather. I mean, really not normal. Um, I've been living here for six years now and huh? this is a, is a exemption. I mean, it should be already getting chilly and wet and, you know, but no, still not. But yeah, I'm doing fine. I mean, I've been very, very busy in these last couple of weeks now. I have recovered from a rock tour. I came mm -hmm. home, uh, took my time to chill and rest and started rehearsing for the next challenge which is a christmas tour now uh -huh. less than a week next week and uh, super happy about it absolutely uh, really happy about it because i've been doing these these shows since 2005 i think all to like all in all so it has became like a really beautiful tradition for me mm -hmm. and uh, to way to close the year is this is a beautiful way to close a year for me and uh but you know a lot of plans for the next years and tours and oh my god uh, it, it's going to be heavy you know mm -hmm. all, all the planning that we have for the next two years but hey happy to be back on the road yes. <laughs> seeing all the kind of changes and change of mood in the industry because i think still it will take more or less two to three years for us to recover from all this downhill that mm -hmm. on the last couple of years. Um, but people are happy. People are like um, refreshed, super happy to get together again and uh, work. I mean, my crew, uh, my musicians, the crew members, they're like, wow, we have, we have had such a great time together again it's like a connecting with our first love again <laughs> yeah. yeah great comparison uh, so i'd like to congratulate you with your upcoming release of best of compilation living the dream and uh, first of all i want to ask uh, was it difficult for you to pick the songs for this compilation because you know 15 years <laughs> it's quite a long time yeah it is and uh, first of all it was remarkable to understand that hey how on earth so many years have passed by so fastly because i've had a i've really lived my dream i am living the dream mm -hmm. uh, my public my listeners are making that possible that i really can live my dream when i was since i was a little girl my dream was to become a musician to become an artist one day and and yes, my beautiful fans are making that happen. And so working on this best of was a really, really long process. It's not only one album, it's a big packaging with a, with a bunch of songs for three albums all in all together. But the main album obviously has the the most, at, le at least from my point of view, the most requested songs in my shows by my fans or the most fan loved songs um, and the ones that have been released as singles as the first releases from every album uh, it has the songs that has songs from every 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 album of mine it was a challenge to choose those songs for all these releases the versions different the media book and then the later on even the kind of very very limited uh, box version where you can find me even singing classical music it was a challenge, but hey, a beautiful challenge. Mm -hmm. All in all, uh, it's an important album. Uh, I feel it's a beautiful opportunity for me to really show uh, who I am or who I have been through all these years. It's a reflection of me as an artist and and uh, is a way for someone to discover me, you know, and mm -hmm. so I but it was a lot of work 
for a few years, actually, to come up with everything, with the artwork, with everything, all the planning, the photos, the with who I'm working this time, um, what kind of uh, style I wanted to have, you know, the, the whole visual art is as important to me as the music itself on the album. So, and there is even a live concert involved mm -hmm. person so people can see the performance, which was only one night in Bucharest uh, with uh, 16 musicians. We played a beautiful, beautiful concert and it's very emotional concert. And I was at that time, that happened in 2020, January. I was at that time celebrating my 15 years as an artist so it was really like a party a really great party mm -hmm. and uh now you'll get to see that too mm -hmm. so a lot of work involved in this mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah for sure so this album contains a new song which i personally as a listener and a fan of yours found like a perfect like representative of Daria in a nutshell like tango and metal <laughs> So, uh, in a couple of words. <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, what would you add to what has just been said by me about this song? Yeah, well, uh, as always, you can expect me to shake the ground. I've done it ever since the beginning I entered the metal scene as a weird birdie, you know, being a classical singer. I've done it always. I've always been the one that has been breaking the boundaries and, um, you know, shaking the ground. And I keep on doing that because that's who I am. That's what I enjoy doing. I, I in a way, I laugh uh, many times that I love educating people with good music, you know. <laughs> I kind of like, ah, you know, how about putting some tango in a metal song? Yeah, why not? <laughs> because there is just so much beautiful music around and... Um, the tongue apart being Astor Piazzolla as an influence in this song, mm -hmm. Storm, as well as Finland's musical father, Sibelius. You can hear part of Sibelius' symphony, uh, Finlandia also in the song. So, hey, those two countries, Argentina, Finland, the most important countries in my life, um, during my lifetime, they played a really big role in my life. And so... Um, of course, they have a big influence to me as well. The environment where I've been living, what I've been taking in from that environment, the people that have been around me at the time, it's a very, very big impact into my art. This song particularly is about sort of internal battle inside of me at the time when it was born. It was actually born already a long time ago, this song. 2012 mm. yeah I had recently became a mother and and wrote this song but at that time I was having this internal struggle where I should where I belong whether I go back to Finland should I stay in Argentina where do I belong and this song is about that finding my peace finding my heart you know where I belong and after all these years, I have found my peace inside and I am comfortable in who I, with who I am nowadays. Um, I don't have any regrets. And so I feel like this song got to go to, get out now. It was the time mm -hmm. for it to come out now. Good timing. I, I was saving it in my archives through all these years, you know. Finally, <laughs> the timing. <laughs> yes, perfect timing. So from what you've just said, it really feels like this song is like a milestone of yours in your creative career. And what are the songs on the album? I guess it will be a <laughs> hard question, but still, what are the songs on the album can be considered milestones in your career? Just several, <laughs> at least. <laughs> All the, I feel like all the albums, in a way, they are very. Every one of them, it's a, it's a new me sort of because, mm -hmm. it's, you know, if you know anything about me and my art in general, and if you think 
of artists in general, like the artists like me that want to progress, want to develop, want to search inspirations, want to search influences, want to travel and discover. I'm one of those artists that hate repeating herself. Mm -hmm. But then there are bands that found the formula in a very early stage or later on in in years, but hey, they found the one way to do things and they repeat it repeatedly because it works <laughs> it works because it works so we repeat it but i don't i am i'm not one of those so i belong to this other <laughs> you know let's say if i need to belong somewhere i belong there don't make me belong anywhere else because i do not belong i am far <laughs> i am out of it but but in that sense i i hate to repeat myself so it's uh, the way I am in general in all the creative process. If I need to only choose one song, it will be really, or one album even, it will be really difficult. Let me say that the last album represents more of the current me because it happens to be the most personal album in my career. I wrote the songs after I had a really severe health issue. And after uh, recovering from that, I felt... I need music to heal me. Uh, the same is with music, like uh, listeners of my music. Also, many of them have been telling me that how much the music has healing powers and how much mm-hmm. music has helped them. And so it's the same for us as artists. It's, it's exactly the same. So I use music to heal me on my last album. And that's why it kind of feels like the most personal. So now I have this best of release and it cleans the table, sort of. I can start again. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a nice feeling about it. Mm. Yes. So it's like something like a closing one amazing chapter to start the next one. That's great. Uh, So let's go back a little bit uh, to the live show. Uh, I have uh, watched the teaser and of course, all those, um, I mean, it was very cinematic and epic and amazing. And I have a couple of questions. First of all, why circus? Actually, the venue was the, the thing that attracted me. I've never done really these kind of rock shows in the middle of the audience. like mm-hmm. Because the, the beautiful part of this was that when I invited all those 16 musicians performing with me, I was looking for a venue that could make the difference, you know, in our performance where we really could feel united, like really being in harmony. And that stage gave us that opportunity to really face each other. It was a challenge for me because I I needed to, and I wanted to go through everyone during the show, you know. But it was such a beautiful experience. I was absolutely right about it. When I chose to perform there, I was the one like really looking for the venue with the promoters involved. And we were like, really like, "Mm, I want something special. And this was it because we could build beautiful lights and there was no pyros or anything like that needed in that show because the whole venue and the atmosphere and the light set up and everything makes it perfect. And the musicians, everything Mm -hmm. is played live. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, so, it for me, it was super magical. For me, it was. And uh, we were very lucky. Hopefully, hopefully in the future, I could go back there or do this kind of similar concert somewhere else. But it's very hard to find a 360-degree <laughs> venue. Ooh, the round stage, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We'll perform in circuses only. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, I also wanted to discuss this uh, thing. I mean, there was this disclaimer that uh, drew my attention. Uh, the first part of this disclaimer was that uh, there was no uh, retakes. Uh, no, I mean, it was absolutely one take show. Wasn't it stressful for you and your musicians? Hey, sixteen guys. We rehearsed two days. Um, uh-huh. um, many of the people I met the first time there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know some of the musicians at all. And um, 
but then many of many of them came back like after years have passed by without seeing each other so it was like a wow so nice family <laughs> big family together again hmm? in a way i also invited these musicians because of my appreciation i wanted to show them my appreciation towards their work in the past and so hmm, that i wanted them to feel like they are part of the family still today mm -hmm. uh, we rehearsed two days we did one show in prague to rehearse the show then we went to Bucharest and we recorded the show. Okay. No stress. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very stressful. But hey, the feeling I got to um, have, and I think every one of us agrees, if you could have a chance to talk with uh, anyone, anyone involved in that show, we were super happy because really seriously, everything was... But like, um, usually in the shows, you know, I am uh, using some stems for some orchestral parts because I can't have a symphonic orchestra in my shows. Or um, my guys are singing backing vocals nowadays already, like a three of them are singing, so not that much of harmonies or stuff like that. But the orchestra parts, they have to somehow be there in the stems. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you miss that. Of course, you are playing live as a band, but... Here in this concert, everything is live. And um, yeah, I started to work on the editions afterwards here at home, listening to the film. And oh my God, there are millions of mistakes, and all the moments that happened during the night are there. I can hear myself re singing wrong lyrics and bullshit melodies and all kind of. <laughs> but it's there. It's there. And I. I love it as it is because it was that magical night and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Emotions are there. So that is what is important for me in, in every show of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm a white bulb full of emotions, you know, in my shows always. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy that because it's really like, for me, it was one of the nicest things I've done in my career. Mm. Okay. Uh, so I still want to discuss the disclaimer because it was very curious for me. So the other part was like no pyros, no screens, no special effects. So don't you think that sometimes, I mean, there are many things like this on contemporary metal shows. Sometimes they distract from the major thing, which is music, actually. Yeah, the production is like huge and you get uh, your attention somewhere else. Exactly, yeah. For me, the main part, the main role has always been for music. The music has has to have the main role. I'm a very emotional performer. I, I am I'm really open and I'm very truth. I've always been very truth in my performances. Um, there's no way I can fake it. In no way, there's no way. So... I believe, and I believe in that connection between me and my audiences also. They receive what I feel. It's so spooky sometimes. It's really like, it's very real, <laughs> the connection. Very real. But I'm also talking with my audiences about this. Uh, how, uh, how grateful I am and how much I appreciate it. And, you know, them giving me the life, as I said to you in the beginning. So, yeah, um, I am using some pyros in my, in my festival shows and so, but this show is about the, the beautiful music that we can, as musicians, create together and uh, make magic happen. And it's enough. You'll see, it's enough. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, entertaining show and uh, with full of emotions and happiness that you can see mm -hmm. yeah so um actually my next question was supposed to be what uh, fuels you to remain so unapologetically yourself but i feel like you have already <laughs> answered this question yes and um that's gorgeous really uh so i would also like to ask um so throughout your career 
Uh, what uh, things appeared by this moment, uh, just as you imagined when you started, and what things appeared to be different in the end? Well, I have had a opportunity. Lucky me, I have had an opportunity to be a part of a band, part of a band that became successful. So um, I was very young when I started. All, all, all in that and. The world was new to me. The whole industry was new to me. I needed to learn very quickly how is to handle to become famous and all that. It was like, what is this? And you know, all to take in and how to handle, how to separate the artistic me from the me person, uh, individual. And that has been very important to me always to be able to separate those two things that I can really come from my tours back home and be the mummy. That I want to be, be the happy mother that I want to be, mm-hmm. wife. I mean, really, it's very important to be able to separate those things, to be an artist. It will be really, of course, I'm working at home constantly for my art and all that. That work never really stops. But hey, the public me is not around, you know, I, I am just, <laughs> I am just, you know, in my pajamas at home. It's not like I'm over there, you know, my beautiful dressing is at home <laughs> no <laughs> and, and that is a fact you know I have very even our neighbors um, right really neighbors uh, live in there they they saw me perform a couple of years ago for the first time and they they've met me as a person you know we've been almost every day together having barbecue glass of wine and celebrating life. And then they saw me perform and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I knew. Yeah. laughs> and that's beautiful. Oh, that is what I enjoy, shocking people in a way, a good way. <laughs> <laughs> really in a good way. Yeah, a good way. And a forgetful way. Yeah. But oh my God, what did you ask me? I, I totally drifted somewhere else. <laughs> Something completely different. I drifted. No, I, I really like how it went in the end. But I was asking about uh, the difference. Like, uh, oh did your God. career, like you have now, match your expectations in the very beginning? Oof, no. When I started my solo career, I, of course, there was a lot of pressure on my shoulders, the public pressure, media pressure. Mm. I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't know if I had it in me, you know really to to start building up a career on my own to writing songs to really if I was strong enough to do all that alone and without giving anybody really to direct me that was the whole thing I wanted to be in charge and mm-hmm. with that responsibility it was in the beginning it was pressure but then it became freedom it became freedom after the first album when I decided mm, I need to find the team that I'm comfortable in working with, the people that are there, loyal to me, to support me, understanding me. And I need to start doing the way I want to do things. And that was the thing that I, from if I look back to my first solo album, my Winter Stormy, I feel it very innocent. Uh, of course, after all these years of experience and uh, knowledge and all these, what have really what has happened? Um, of course, if I now would produ- produce myself that first album, it would become different. But I don't dare to touch it because it has its place, reason and meaning, and uh, it was that moment in my life, very important moment in my life, gave me the wings to start on my own. And uh, it's been, after that, it's been like super learning, growing process and uh, growing the confidence in me, Mm -hmm. uh, finding my ways, still alone. And still from ever the beginning, I have been alone in a way, but I have found great people to work with. And those people, I'm like... I, I owe them so much. Uh, 
And if there is a new artist, you know, willing to get a, some kind of advice, for example, many people ask me, what would you say? I'm always saying you need to be true to yourself and and believe in you, of course, yes, but you won't survive alone. You need to find someone that you can really trust and that believes in you as well. Mm-hmm. Because your own ears are not enough. They might be, but many times they are not. Who would you want to hear covering your song? I will try to make questions shorter. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh, who oh, I would love to call on. Well, well, Muse, if I covered their song, so if they would do a song from me, <laughs> that would be a bomba. <laughs> Sorry, I sincerely hope they will see this interview somehow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Recently, I went to see their show here in Malaga. Mm-hmm. They played the festival. What recent releases impressed you the most? Wow. Recent releases. That's the question because I, I, I don't get to hear too much new music nowadays. For that, I thank Spotify. Mm-hmm. Then I have like a, still today is Friday, and today is the release radar, and I haven't been able to check the release radar what's there. But um, I've been checking the new album from Disturb, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, what is else? What is else? No, well, I'm really looking for, yeah, the In Flames. Uh, I'm really a huge fan of In Flames. I really love them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, who else I can say? Recently, I discovered a band that has been there for many, many years, but hey. Um, oh, wait, 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 what I'm saying? No, no, no. What is this song called? Zombified by... Ah, I think. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Are there not all that remains? Uh, Fall in Reverse. Ah, oh, Falling in Reverse. I know them, but I don't know the song. Kind of um, industrial sound, sort of. And uh, that band I discovered uh, recently. And I was like, wow, what is this I need to do? And even my daughter, like, she asks me when I'm driving from her school back home. You know? <laughs> She's like, could you please call me something fine? Okay. <laughs> she likes she likes rock and she likes metal. Yeah, nice music taste, by the way. <laughs> like, Very open, but hey, also rock and metal part of her. That's She's always telling me I'm gonna become a rock drummer. That's that's great. <laughs> that's truly great. And um, actually, actually, I want to say that the recent release I was impressed by was your participation uh, in singing Dark Chest of Wonders with Krush. Uh, oh. That was just, I read one comment on YouTube. It was like, it feels like coming home sort of thing. Uh, can you please just in a couple of words tell me how it managed to happen? Wow, because the crew members, some of them working with Nightwish, were working still on the time when I was working with the band. And uh, so they contacted me. And obviously, it was an email that sort of dropped by. And uh, it was like, what? Wait, seriously, the guys are asking me to sing on, on their album. Of course, I will do that. For sure, I will help them. If I can help them with one song, come on, I will do that. Of course, I will support them. And um, then they told me the song it was uh, Dark Chest of Wonders and sent me a background. It was not finished yet, so it was in progress. So I, I sang on a really, really rough demo, my vocals. I recorded them at home, my vocals. And it was so funny. I mean, I, I was singing this song and I was having a party in the studio, really, because it was so easy to sing the song. I remember when when I was recording these songs, it was challenge for me to maintain and it was high and all that. But my how my voice has developed over the years, mm-hmm. I felt that it was like a party and the backing track, you know, being a totally dubstep. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> really different. And it was so funny. I had a good time recording the song and yeah, it was nice. So very nice of them to ask me. Mm-hmm. 
It's absolutely amazing. I would like to thank you for taking part. It was such a surprise for real. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And I knew that this would be like, a, people will be asking me and all that. <laughs> it's natural, obviously. It's natural after all these years and all that. But hey, lovely. I mean, hmm. those guys, they are working hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it just appeared to be absolutely great. So I am um, glad that we still have time for the one last question. It will, it will be obviously, what will be a message for your fans who will see this interview? Oh, wow. I want to thank you all for your love and support and, and the beautiful messages I'm receiving every day. Seriously, it's been amazing. And I, I want to give all that love back to you, hopefully in future with my new albums and tours and concerts and whatever if you're gonna be there oh my god thank you so much and i want to wish you all happy holidays if i mm -hmm. don't see you somewhere down on the road now in the next weeks but happy holidays and uh, wishing you well and see you next